And one thing probably everybody can agree on is that today may not be, unless it's a terrific leftover sandwich, this only takes care of one meal today. And in the coming days, you may want something different than Turkey. Burton's Grill is back in the Hampton Roadshow Kitchen. And today, Chase Barton joins us. You're the executive chef, and you brought the beef. Yes, today we're going to be doing a steak au poivre, mm -hmm. um, which is a traditional di uh, French dish, steak with pepper. Um, and there's lots of different variations and twists on it, but right. um, today we're going to be showing you what we do at the restaurant. And, okay. Uh, so what kind, of, uh, what kind of steak is that? What kind of cut is ideal for this dish? This is a New York strip. Um, we have a 14-ounce choice grade mm -hmm. New York strip. I like it because it holds up well to the sauce and the pepper. Okay. Um, but if you preferred like a filet or something like that, could you make that a poivre, or do you really recommend the strip for this particular you dish? You can use a variety of steaks okay. for this dish. Yes. Perfect. So what else, uh, what other ingredients are we working with today? Uh, we have some chopped onions, some minced garlic, a little bit of red wine, um, cornstarch, beef stock, heavy cream and Dijon mustard, mm -hmm. a little bit of olive oil, uh, cognac, and peppercorns. Okay, so what's the first thing to do? Um, starting off with a little bit of butter in our um, pot here. Mm -hmm. We're just going to lightly saute our onions and garlic. This is going to be the base of the sauce. Mm -hmm. um, you can make this ahead of time if you were throwing a party and wanted to knock out um, some preparations beforehand. Mm -hmm. but yeah, we're just going to lightly saute those. And this is a menu item at uh, Burton's Grill, I would guess? Yep. We are featuring this through the holiday season, so mm -hmm. come on out and, uh, and give us a try. Mm -hmm. Once oh. the, uh, You don't want to get any browning on the onions, but once you have a nice translucent color on the garlic and the onions... Okay. Now, why not brown them? Uh, you don't want that flavor in there. Okay. Just a vice. Because they're burnt. You can say because they'd be burned, Carrie. It's okay <laughs> to say that. I thought there was something called caramelized, where they can turn a little bit brown, and it's a good thing. Certain dishes, you do want to add that caramelization, but in this one, we want the other flavors to come through. Fair enough. And then we've added our red wine. I'm going to let this reduce just a little bit, and then I'm going to add in my um, beef stock, heavy cream, and Dijon mustard. Okay. But this is going to take a little bit of, a little bit for these flavors to kind of blend together before you add the other stuff? Yeah. Well, this is going to cook for probably about 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Right. It'll, it'll become almost dry, and mm -hmm. then we'll add these and let those flavors cook for about 10 minutes. Now, why not throw it all in the pot and heat it up together? I'm uh, playing devil's advocate, but some, you know, why not? Um, chefs like to develop flavors as they, as they work throughout a recipe. So you want to season early, you want to, um, you really want the reduced flavor of that red wine to come through in the sauce, mm -hmm. whereas you wouldn't get that if it was in with everything else. Okay. All right, a good answer there. So um, this is one of the items on, this, on, your, on a seasonal menu. Anything else new that you want to let folks know about? Um, we're also featuring um, some oysters Rockefeller mm -hmm. using local Virginia oysters mm -hmm. um, and a great dish using rockfish. Rockfish has just started to come into season, and um, it's very popular at the restaurant. All right, we look forward to rockfish season around here every year. That's very true. Brunch is going on on the weekends and things like yep, that? Yeah, we offer brunch on Sundays um, from 10 to 3, mm -hmm. or 11 to 3, I'm sorry. And um, it's a big hit. We have a lot of, lot of great dishes at brunch. All right. I'm totally out of questions, so I hope it's time to put in the next ingredient. Yeah. Here we're going to add our beef stock. You Perfect. can um, use homemade beef stock or beef broth that you have mm -hmm. um, that you just buy at the, at the restaurant. I always recommend using low sodium or reduced sodium um, broths if you do buy them from the restaurant, mm -hmm. I mean from the, um, the grocery store, just so that you can, always, you can always add more salt later to flavor your dishes, but you can, it's really hard to take salt out of a dish. Yeah. Um, and you when talking about salt, but when it comes to the pepper in this dish, because steak au poivre, you said steak with pepper, if somebody initially says, ooh, I don't like a lot of pepper, should they be worried that that's all they're going to taste, or does that flavor kind of blend in or, or fade away a little bit in the cooking process? Pepper is a very predominant flavor in this dish. So if you don't like pepper, this may not be a dish for you. Okay. Um, but you, you'll be surprised at the amount of pepper that we use and how well it actually does go into the dish well, and it's okay. not, it doesn't come off as too peppery, but... Pepper is definitely a predominant flavor. There. Okay, and what did you just sneak in there while I was talking? Uh, it was uh, Dijon mustard and uh, heavy cream. And heavy cream. Okay, and now how long will this... Will this, this will reduce for about 10 minutes. All right. So we're going to bring it to a boil and then just let it simmer. Well, we'll go find a few other things to do, and then we'll come back, Chase, okay, when it's time to go to the next step for our steak au poivre. All right. All the ingredients for the sauce are bubbling up there. We're back in the Hampton Roadshow Kitchen with Burton's Grill, um, making steak au poivre here with Chase Barton. Uh, and in the first segment, if you're kind of just joining us, we got the sauce going. Basically, the beef stock, the red wine, heavy cream, onions, shallots. What did I forget? Dijon mustard. Mustard. Secret ingredient. All right. So that's looking good. And you said now it's time to just kind of let that sit, and we're going to get the steak started. Yep. We're going to season the steak right now. Okay. Um, we use coarsely ground cracked peppercorns. You really want a nice 
um, large coarse ground on there. If you go too fine, the pepper is going to be very strong. Okay. Um, so we want to keep the the, um, the grinds nice and coarse. If you have um, a pepper grinder at home that can go coarse enough, then you can use that. Otherwise, um, I would take a just put it underneath of a pan and um, just and crack take it down. A whole, so you get take the whole corns and. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can buy them whole. You can buy right them right there in the spice aisle. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll have to take a closer look next time. So we have um, we have our, our peppercorns with a little bit of kosher salt in here, mm -hmm. and we're going to give this a really nice um, coating. Uh, you don't want to skimp on this because if not, it won't be all puff. <laughs> you want to okay. have that peppercorn really coming through. So we've got a nice coat on there. Mm -hmm. Flip it over. Make sure we get the other side going. Mm -hmm. And I have um, some olive oil heating up in the pan over there that we're going to use to sear this. Okay, and then so you're going to sear it, but then you're going to end up finishing it in the oven. Yep, this is a nice thick piece of meat, so we're going to um, we'll sear it off on each side, and then I have the oven at 450. Wow. Okay. And uh, we'll just throw it in there to finish it off. All right. And how long will it stay in there? Um, we're going to do about two minutes on each side in the pan. Right. And probably another four to five minutes in the oven. That's it. Just mm -hmm. four to five minutes. Okay. Well, I figured it wouldn't be too too long because it got it cranked up pretty high. What do you like best about cooking, Chase? Um, I love flavors, the aromas. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a really fun job. Mm -hmm. How did you get into it? Um, I started cooking when I was in high school and um, grew to love it. And then after college, I decided to go to culinary school. Yeah. And um, just it's sort of grown on from there. Mm -hmm. Now, when folks, you know, think about culinary school and they think about learning to cook, you know, all these uh, television shows are very popular right now. Our producer is a big Gordon Ramsay fan. Aren't you, Virginia? Yes, you are. So is it like that when you're learning to cook? Are people screaming and yelling at you or is it a little more refined? Depends on where you work. Yes? Um, you don't have to talk about Burton's Grill. Yes. <laughs> we're, not, we're not one of the yelling restaurants, but I have had a few chefs that have um, lost their voices yelling at me throughout, <laughs> throughout the shift. But right, right. What do you think is the hardest thing about cooking? The hardest thing? Um, for professional cooking is just the hours and being on your feet. And it's, it's yeah. a lot of fun to cook at home, but it's a lot different to... To do that as a profession, I guess. Right, right. Now, have you um, obviously steak au poivre? That's the recipe that's been around for a long time. It's an oldie, it's a goodie, and a classic. But have you ever come up with something that was kind of brand new? It's um, typically chefs don't come up with a whole lot that's new. Everything, yeah. like you say, everything has been done at least at one point. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are some chefs out there that are really pushing the the limits, but um, my approach to cooking is sort of just to take. Take the classics and um, you know mix them up a little do bit, right, do a little right. bit twist. Cool. Now you said you're going to plate up the steak with um, some oysters that you brought. Very nice of you to bring some oysters today. So yep. what if what do folks need to know about preparing oysters at home? Starting with how to buy oysters and make sure they're nice and fresh because I know you can get into trouble with shellfish if you're not careful. Yep. Um, the most important thing about buying and preparing shellfish is the buying process. You want to make sure you're buying them from. Um, a reputable supplier. So you want to go to your go to your fish guy at the at the local supermarket and uh -huh. um, and order them ahead of time. Make sure you have them in for when when you need them. All right, all right. So Chase said two minutes on each side. This is going to go in the oven, and we will finish up our dish in the next cooking segment. You are a trooper through all that Q and A. Thanks, Chase. All righty, back in the Hampton Road Show kitchen. Out of nowhere, Chase has brought out the oysters. Chef Barton, of course, the executive chef at Burton's Grill. Couldn't talk him into calling it Barton's Grill. No, couldn't. Not yet. Not yet. One to watch, this guy. All right, making steak au poivre, a classic French dish with the New York strip. Yep, we've taken our steak out of the oven. I'm just going to let that rest a little bit so that when we cut into it, the juices don't bleed everywhere. I have a bad habit of wanting to cut a steak to see if it's done. So what, what can you do? Well, you know that it's done because you're a chef. but For larger steaks, you can use a thermometer and stick it in there, even smaller ones. Um, but a lot of it will just come with practice and being able to touch the steak and tell um, mm -hmm. if it's really tough, it's probably well done, and if it's really squishy, it's probably still rare. So, so what, if, go you, somewhere in between what if you let it rest and then you cut it and it's too rare? What can you do at that point? Do you, should you just let it sit for a little while more? Because I've kind of heard that it keeps cooking thing, it, or should you stick it back in the oven? It will keep cooking. If it's way too rare, throw it back in the oven. But okay. If it's almost there, um, put a little foil over it and let it rest. Just wait. Okay, good tips. Thank you very much, Chase. I appreciate that. All right, what are you doing now? What are you doing We're over there? We're finishing up our sauce. The steak is all ready to go, so I'm okay. gonna, I'll am gonna put that on the plate and let that rest. Mm -hmm. um, and in the meantime, I'm, right now I'm toasting my peppercorns. Okay. Um, it's very important to do this step. It brings out a lot of flavor, mm -hmm. all the oils that are in the peppercorn, but you don't want to go too far. Okay. Um, so the best way to tell is look at the color. It should start to look a little bit brown. Mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't turn very black. Because the peppercorns, are they're actually green when they're when they're raw, right? Yes. Okay, because I've... 
thought they were, I've made, mistaken them for capers. And then somebody said, nope, that is what a peppercorn looks like before it becomes ground pepper. Yep, and they have black peppercorns, green peppercorns, pink peppercorns. Pink ones? Yep. So um, the best way to tell that the pepper is done cooking yep. is by the aroma. You can really start to um, just stick your head over there and you can really it starts smell to smell really good. Yep, it does smell good. Now we're going to add our cognac. Very important that you do this away from Unless the Unless you want a big fire. <laughs> you all right? I'm good. <laughs> and we just want to catch that on fire a little bit. Okay. And we're going to let that reduce down until it's, um, it's very dry. I used a lot of hairspray today, so I'm just I'm going to hang here until <laughs> that's, uh, that's done. Um, okay. But it's very important that you do add that away from the flame so that you don't injure yourself with the, with the fire. Well, thing. right, if you're cooking with gas, that could be bad. All right, so um, the flame has stopped. All the alcohol is burned off, and we're just left with the flavor of the cognac. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add about three ounces of our sauce here. Like I said, you can make this sauce ahead of time. Wow, that got and nice and creamy. Yep. That's a nice color, too. So this is what we started working on in the first segment, and we just want to remind folks that all of the ingredients are going to be at thehamptonroadshow.com. All the, the how-tos here from Chase will be online. Yep, and we do have a very special offer for the viewers of the Hampton Roadshow um, for this holiday weekend. Uh, first 50 viewers to call into the restaurant and make a reservation will receive buy one, get one free entrees. Get out of town. Yeah, when so does that start? How soon can they start calling? Um, like right now? You can make your reservations for tonight through Sunday. And you start calling right now, just if you're a Hampton Roadshow viewer. So they have to call and say, hey, I love the Hampton Roadshow, and that's how they'll know. Exactly. Do you have to go this weekend, or, or can you make a reservation for maybe, is it maybe the following weekend? It's for reservations for this week. For this weekend. All right, so you got to jump on it, make your reservation for Friday, Saturday, or Sunday this yes. weekend, and make sure that you <gasps> tell them the Hampton Roadshow sent you. Exactly. And if, they say, if they're like, I just love that Carrie Fury special table, or does it... Free, free dessert? No. <laughs> mm. That's funny how he did that. Free dessert? No, not really. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. Fans of the Hampton Road Show, call so, in, make your reservation. Our sauce is complete. It's nice and thick. Yep. And we can just pour that right over top of our steak. Oh, my gosh. Make your reservation and then have the steak up one. That looks really great. That's All right. Dessert. Now, come on. We can't just talk about these oysters like, like it's parsley or something you're just throwing on the side of the dish. I mean, what, how did you prepare these? These are Shinkatig oysters from mm -hmm. the eastern shore of Virginia. Um, parcel to them because that's where I grew up. But they have really nice salty flavor from the ocean. And um, we do a Rockefeller mix that has um, a special ingredient in there. We put a little bit of white sambuca, <coughs> um, and that cooks off, gives a little bit of sweetness to the um, to the mixture with the, the spinach in there and the cream and the pecorino romano cheese. So wow, very delicious. All right, and there you have it. Thank you so much, Chase. We're going to divvy this up so we can all give it a try in a couple of minutes. Thanks.